Hi, my name's Karen O'Connor and welcome to this episode of the Menopause, Marriage and Motherhood podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Something that I've realised that's really interesting is that we don't actually talk about menopause much, or at least I don't. And it's something that's not discussed openly until we actually hit menopause and we start having symptoms and then we put our hands up to our friends and go, has anybody else got this? I'd just like to talk about this. So I thought I'd correct that. And this is the first of a conversation that I'm going to have with different people about their experiences in menopause. I should say different women because it is going to be women. I might talk to the occasional guy to see how he coped with his partner going through menopause. But for the most part, this is about women. Today, I'm talking to Mariah Ryder. So uh, I grew up in the States. I grew up in Minnesota. I'm the eldest of four kids. I'm 54, I think. Yes, I'm 54. (laughs) Yep, yep, that's right. I can't even keep straight anymore. So just general history. Got married to an English guy when we were living in Boston and then moved to Chicago, then moved to Florida and then decided to come to Australia on vacation and fell in love with it and decided to stay. So how long ago was that? When did you? 15. We've been here 15 years. So I work in IT and project management software, and he runs his own business, leadership consulting businesses, and has done worked at the different universities and stuff like that. I have an 18-year-old daughter who's at the University of Sydney this year and a 16-year-old son who's in year 10. So we were going to talk about menopause because to me, I've kind of realized that, so I've been doing this, the podcast in this year, I started earlier this year, and it's come, it's been really interesting because I've got two daughters, one's 21 next week and the other one's 16. And it was quite surprising to realize that they actually don't really know anything about menopause and I certainly got never got I don't know what your mum was like but my mum never said anything I got the period talk when you're 13 or 12 or whatever but I never got any information on this is what happens in childbirth this is what happens as you get older this is what you're going to experience and I think that was a generational thing as well certainly Mm. for my mum because you know you don't discuss things like that with people Right, yeah. How was it for you? What did you know before you get to menopause? I I suppose that's a good start. What were you expecting? I didn't know anything. I thought that you, menopause was when you just stopped bleeding. (laughs) Period. (laughs) Me too. Me too. I had no, I had no idea that there was this whole warm up to menopause called perimenopause and that actually you would have a ton of what are the things, symptoms, if you will, or different things that are included in menopause or in the menopause conversation before you actually entered menopause. And then really, you didn't really ever know when you were in menopause because you have to wait 12 months until your last period. And so you could think you're in it and then you're in for like six months and then you get a period. And then you have to start over again. And so I think that's one of the big reasons that it's not studied that much or evaluated is because it's really hard to know exactly what's going on and the timing is different for every single person and it's a larger range than when you're a teenager and you're going to get your period it's usually between well it's between 10 and let's say 10 and 16 generally but then it's a much smaller window but for menopause it seems to be much larger There's a ton more different things that people have it doesn't seem to be the same for anybody They talk about being able to test for perimenopause, but my doctor said, I could test you and I could test Karen and you guys could have the exact same symptoms and you would appear as if you're in perimenopause vis-a-vis the hormones and Karen wouldn't. And so they just, they just, I think, know very little about it. And the number of different symptoms by people is just crazy, crazy different from everything that I've read and been a part of. And so I knew nothing and then I tried to learn a ton. I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent here. Is this something that you discussed with your friends or was it just when when you started getting the first symptoms? I never discussed it with my friends until I started getting the first symptoms. And I even find now that a lot of my friends don't really want to talk about it necessarily. 
but I'm all about like, if we don't talk about it, A, how can we get any better? And so the things that I learned were, so what happened for me was I was going along in my own little life. And then I had this eruption of bitchiness at my children, like completely uncalled for. And I was like, whoa, where'd that come from? And then like, again, a week later, the same thing happened. And it just so happened that I was doing a a mother-daughter retreat with my daughter at the time. And she would have been, I think, maybe 11 or 12. And so I just mentioned it to these these women. And they're like, well, that sounds like menopause. I'm like, it cannot be menopause. I'm as regular as the day is long. And they're like, no, no, that's that definitely could be menopause. And so one of them recommended a book by Christiane Northrup called The Wisdom. I think it's called The Wisdom of Menopause or something similar. I can look it up. And I got literally, I went to the library the next day, got it out, read it cover to cover. And absolutely what I was experiencing was the first indications of my hormones starting to change. One of the things that she recommends is Remy Femin. It's a black cohash herb. So I started with that and then I found an herb woman because I I didn't ever really want to do HRT for me. I didn't ever really settle well with the pill. So just that just didn't work for me. I know it works for some other people, but for me, it just wasn't going to work. So then have been doing herbs ever since, but have had a three month long period, have had then no period, have had where I literally thought I had lice all the time because my head itched. And just a little rosemary oil helped with that and seriously had so many of the different symptoms around menopause. And then in also reading that book, one of the things I learned, I feel like I'm talking a lot here. One of the things I learned was just how many women finally just get fed up with putting up with the BS in their life. Because we start out as caregivers and then our bodies evolve. And so then we get to being in caregivers as early mothers or siblings and then mothers and then we care for our children and then we get to the point where we're just not going to take care of anybody anybody time anymore and that's time for us to take care of ourselves and so that was one of the things I got from this book and then she recommended another book called the female brain I forget who the author is anyway so that book chunks it down really nicely into birth menstruation blah blah childbearing menopause And so I actually wanted my husband to read that because I said, listen, you and I are not going to make it because I am just like, I tried to, I tried to fire myself from cooking. I didn't want to do anything for the family. I was done, done, done. And I wanted him to be on the same page with me because I could totally see why people get to a point where they're like, not done. I'm not doing it anymore. And I wanted it to be a team effort for us. So share that with him. Just, this is where I'm, what I'm going through. This is where things are at. And so we've been able to have some really good conversations around it. I haven't had a period in three or four years and I still have hot flushes and night sweats and I'm still not all the way through. I don't think that's what I can tell you of my journey. Read both those books as well. My husband bought them both for me because I'm the same. I started looking it up when I started getting the first symptoms and Mm -hmm. I went to the doctor because I was covered in rashes bizarre rashes that were constantly itchy yeah and she said to me oh you're perimenopausal I said well what can I do she said nothing yeah and uh, what I find really mm, kind of a mixture of horrified and appalling is that the medical industry knows really nothing about menopause other than you can have this long 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 list of symptoms but we don't know what to do about it. We don't know how long it's going to last. We, we'll put a name on it, but that's about as far as we'll go. There is no research really being done into it, but there's also no discussion. No, and I and think a lot of until, cases too. Yeah, and I think until we all really start discussing this, like yeah. with periods, they're just starting to advertise periods as women bleed. That's yeah. what it's all about. And until we start going, look, the menopause impacts not just us, but Mm. it impacts everybody around us. Because Mm. I know I turned into the bitch from hell for a good few years. And I haven't, I've been struggling for sleep for probably eight years now. And it's just weird. I had a really good night's sleep last night. So I'm like rocking all over the place today. And then I might not sleep for the next week. Yep. I I, I still have that. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. 
Yeah. I just consider that, it not part of my life. I don't need that, you know. Yeah. You just deal with it, don't you? Yeah. Like my husband has one bad night's sleep and he's like, oh my God, I'm terrible. And I'm like, try eight years. Yeah. Yeah. Same. <laughs> And I just find it frustrating that nobody can really give us any guidance as yeah. to how do we deal with the rashes or the weird stuff that happens with skin? How do we deal with this? Are you just eating what you have done for the last God knows how many years and then all of a sudden you put on five pounds in a week? Yeah. And those, like you say, those periods that just go on and on and on. Mine didn't last um, well, I suppose a week, 10 days. Mm. But sometimes they were so heavy, I couldn't even get up out of a chair. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I had that too. Like I never bled through my entire life. And then I'm going through menopause and I'm going, cool, I, I got to get to a bathroom like right now. Because yeah. I also used a moon cup and the moon cup just wouldn't work any longer. <laughs> that was a disaster. <laughs> yeah, no, no. My sister-in-law was, she had it way worse than me. She had periods where she was three weeks on the period and one week off for yeah. about five years. Oh, my gosh. And so heavy that she couldn't do anything. Well, it so was... my 100-day period, I kept waiting for it to end. You know, every day I'd be like, oh, no, it's going to end today. And so I didn't do anything about it, didn't do anything about it. And finally I took myself to the doctor and they're like, you've gone down so slow. My iron was so low. They said if you had to come in and tested that, you'd be in the hospital. But just because it went down so slowly that I was just like, soldiering on but exhausted exhausted but didn't realize didn't you know dumb but you know I get it so frustrating when you started going through all this how did it impact you men impact Jesus Christ menopause this is the menopause isn't it this is what it does how did it impact you mentally to me and the, the reason I'm asking this is for me because I didn't know and wasn't prepared for what could happen, hmm. it made it more difficult because there was less certainty and predictability about it. It was just, oh, there's another symptom. Oh, is that the menopause? Well, oh, my God, no, I can't go more than five minutes from the toilet. Why can't I think straight? It was just one thing after another, and I didn't know what to expect next, which yeah. made it worse for me. I think. Well, I think for me, though, I didn't – I don't feel like I had that kind of reaction because literally within a week or two weeks of my first real symptoms, I got knowledge. So I got books. Then I was on the internet. I joined a Facebook group, menopause and holy cow, did I feel better about myself joining that group? I mean, mine were bad, but I read some of these people's and then also I had a supportive husband, you know, as supportive as they can be. And just was able to talk about it. And then I'm not shy. So I'm telling everybody about this book, right? Oh, you've got to read this book. Menopause? Oh, you must read this book. And I've told my sisters about it. So as I said, I'm the oldest of four. But my mom had went through menopause. I didn't live at home anymore. So I only know that she really struggled with it. And so as a result of that, I think I was hyper aware that I could go into a really bad spin during this time if I wasn't careful. And so I was willing to try anything and everything. So that's why I did the herbs and I did the Remy Fenton and just whatever, whatever it would take. And, and because I was open to talking about it, actually, that was how I got onto the Remy Fenton because I just said to a friend of mine, I'm like, Oh, I mean, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, Oh, wow. And then, and she'd been going through it for a while, but hadn't said anything. So it's just, you know, I'm, I just am a believer that you got to talk about it, you know, and I was out to dinner with some friends last week. And everything came off because I had a hot flash. And they're like, why well, you got 17 layers up? Why are you taking them off? I'm like, hot flash, man. You know, just put it out there because that's what it is. And I just think also men need to know about it. I think they do. I think there needs to be more understanding. And it was because I've got two sons as well as two daughters. And it was interesting as I've been talking about all of this stuff and what yeah. happened in childbirth and the damage that can happen that we're only just finding out it is actually permanent damage. Hmm. My eldest son said to me, God, mum, I'd be horrified if that happened to my partner. You know, I want to know yeah. what's, what are the possible consequences of taking a particular course of action Yes, because I don't want my partner to go through something like that. But the menopause is the same thing. At least you've been lucky. I've been lucky with our husbands in that mm -hmm. they 
care enough. Yes. And that's kind of, that's a bit. For they them, care they care enough. enough. To be understanding about yeah. it and go, yeah. oh, she's acting a bit weird. Yeah. It's not about me. There's something going yeah. on. My husband at one point was coming home with about a book a week for me, on mostly on sleep, but a lot of them on menopause. He came yeah. home with the menopause woman, the female brain and heaps of others. And he'd read them too, just yeah. to try and get some understanding as to yeah. what the hell had happened to his wife because I was not the same person. And no. I wasn't. It's true. Yeah, no, and I didn't want to be around anybody. I would be like, okay, I'm done. I'm done with humans. Done. <laughs> yeah, I remember a couple of times I did the school pickup. The girls were at school. The boys had left school, and I did the school pickup, and they were just doing the teenage yak, 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 yak. And I just I remember this one day, I just dropped them at home. I said, get out. <laughs> them out of the car and then I just drove off I had to just yeah. go and drive around for a couple yeah. of hours because yeah. I, I just could not I didn't have the emotional energy to be around anybody anymore I was over it completely over it and I it's funny you said that about your mum too because that brought back a memory for me because I'd left home when mum went through menopause but she actually went through menopause quite early like in her early mid 40s okay and she went she just passed out she just killed over and passed out oh. and my dad would find her on the floor oh wow <laughs> so I've got to warn my daughters that yeah, that's yeah. A, a potential issue that's never happened to me but one mm. of my daughters has always been a bit of a fainting flurry so right 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 yeah definitely <laughs> a definite possibility there so you've been discussing this a bit more what are the because if you were talking to somebody who's in their early 40s or, or mm. whatever, they're approaching menopause, what would you want to say to them? What would be the most key issue that you could pass along to somebody? I think the biggest thing is to get informed. I don't know that there's a key issue because every person that I've talked to, other than the lack of sleep, but we all dealt with that when we did when we had babies. I think the big thing is just find out what are all the different things that could happen to you so that you know, and then you can say, okay, I want to talk about this and, and, and talk to people about it and just don't be shy to it or be embarrassed about that. That's what's going on because there are so many different issues. Like each person has their own thing. I don't personally know of anybody that had the itching of the head, but as soon as I mentioned it in this Facebook group, it came back to me. I literally thought I had lice for two weeks. I kept saying to my son, can you look? honey, can you check? Which is embarrassing in its own right. Yeah. And then as soon as I put on this rosemary oil, it was fine within a couple of days. So it's just a matter of like things that just never occurred to me that would be part of menopause. And it's just such, such a huge shift. And because now we're adults, we're taking care of a whole bunch of other things, not to mention my daughter was going through HSC during the time. And you're like, oh my, just everything's going on. And so just trying to understand what are all the things and then what resources do you have and who can you talk to? And I, I just think getting informed is the best thing that somebody can do. And the other I, thing for me, like you just said, sorry, is to talk to people because mm. I think being isolated and for myself, not really having anybody to talk to at the time when I started going through it, that was the hardest thing. Mm. If I could have spoken to you and gone, oh, Mariah, this is happening, yeah. that would have made all of the difference for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. But finding people that are open to talking about it because not everybody is. No. So I would often frequently open the door. I would lay it out there, and if they wanted to talk, great. And if they didn't, that was fine too. But I always would recommend that the, the Christiane Northrup book as a starting place. There's other books out there, but I found that to be the, the most comprehensive one. And I just really like how she approached it too, as far as it really just a celebration of the next chapter of your life versus some people get, oh, woe is me. And I missed my period. And I was like, no, not me, not ever. Just <laughs> So I was really happy to be moving to that next chapter of my life and just tried to use it as a celebration. I agree with you. I hadn't really thought of that, but that's spot on. It's not... Well, it, it kind of is an ending and there's got to be a little bit of grieving for that, but it's also a beginning where that's it. Our days of having to take care of everybody else are now over. That's If we look at it from that perspective, that yeah. could maybe be how we look at it. 
And okay, now it's time to focus on myself and enjoy myself. Yeah. What is, <laughs> apart from not having periods anymore, which yeah. I agree is the best thing ever, what are the advantages for you of being in menopause? Uh, oh, pretty I much. Would, we don't know whether you are, but, you know. Okay. I, no, I definitely am. No, because I haven't had one for three years. Right, okay. No, no, I definitely am now um, fully through. Well, outside of the no periods, sex with no condoms. That's probably the biggest one. <laughs> I hadn't even thought of that. John had to snip years ago. So oh, I'm see, probably, no, yeah. no snip in my house. But other than that, I really can't say that there actually are that many benefits that I have totally encountered yet. So even though you finished your last period three years ago, you're still getting the symptoms, the hormonal symptoms, are you? So I definitely, like like even just last night, this morning when I woke up, my nightgown was damp. I don't get them as bad, but I still get them. And I, I mean, right now I'm warmer. They're not as drastic, but I still definitely get them. And a friend, I said something to a friend of mine, just even within the last two years, I had one day that I woke up in the morning and my, I had a hot flash so bad that my glasses fogged up and I couldn't read. And my, we write a Christmas letter. And so my husband had put that in the Christmas letter. And a friend of mine who's about probably eight years older than I am wrote me and she said, oh, I feel your pain. She said, I knew when I got my first full night's sleep that I was finally done. And I'm like, oh, so we do get to go back to sleep at some point. So, you know, I'm holding out hope for a full good night's sleep anytime in the near future. I don't have a a lot of the other ones. My main ones still are just the hot flushes and the night sweats and the crappy sleep. Those are my three main ones, but the rest of them are gone. So those are the ones that I still deal with on a fairly regular basis. Have you any idea how long they continue for after? I've heard five to eight years. Right. So I'm in year three. So I'll let you know. I'm in year three as well. So <laughs> we're on the journey together then. Yeah, about the same point. Because I still strike the night sweats is the hard. I don't get many hot flushes during the day, touch wood. Mm-hmm. But the night flushes are the ones because it, then you just wake up with this burst of adrenaline, don't you? It's mild. It's just I mild. Was, when I was at my, my worst with night sweats, I literally could wake up four times a night, completely drenched, drenched. It would be the middle of the winter, so uncomfortable. So I would just literally put next to the bed two or three different shirts, one off, put the next one on, go back to sleep and wait. So, yeah, no, they were nasty. I mean, at least now my sleeping is not great, but it's not like it was. It's like, I no, like, yeah, relatively speaking, now I just wake up really bloody early, but that's fine. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What are your feelings about the whole menopause experience? I never really thought about it. It's interesting that it's. I'm in the space right now of, well, okay, we've discussed that. Now what? It's like it's, it's a topic that I'm almost very practical about. Very, well, this is the what so. That's what we're going through. What else is there to say? Yep. Very pragmatic and Perhaps that's part of the issue because we tend to just get on with stuff. We yeah. just deal with it. That's in my space. Okay, that's recognize it and then keep going. And I'm wondering how much, because this is a completely new conversation for me. Hmm. I mean, I do talk about it and laugh about it a little bit, but it's not something that I would dwell on at all. I just kind of basically ignore it and just get on with life as best I can. Yeah. But isn't, I mean, I really, I don't know that what good there is dwelling on it other than to potentially see, is there for the, for the next group, is there a way to, like when I started, whenever I, I've never really seen any studies like, hey, we, you know, we want to talk to you because again, nobody knows when it's going to start. So it's really hard to study, but just keeping getting the information out there so people know. I've been really frank with my daughter. This is what's going on, okay? Just so you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, she's not going to remember any of it, and hopefully I'll be alive when she goes through it. But I don't know that dwelling on it does much, especially because it's something you just kind of go through, and then you get to the next chapter. And then I think the next chapter, I mean, this chapter's been good once I got it under control. I'm so much happier than I was three or four years ago, though. It really was kind of messy for a while in my head. 
But also when you're really busy with your kids and your stuff like that, you don't have time to fart around and ponder what's going on with your menopause. And now I'm just like, oh, yep, nope, good. Okay, what? You know, next. I think that messing in the head, that was the hardest symptom for me because I was completely depressed for about three years, maybe four years. Mm. And it took me a long time to come through it. And I didn't necessarily link it with the menopause. Right. Which I think, and and maybe it's, we do get to a point where we go, okay, enough's enough now. I'm fed up with the caring bit. I'm completely over it. I've got to do something else with my life. Yeah. And then is that a symptom of the menopause or is it, does it just come around the same time? Chicken and the egg kind of thing. But I think if I can say to my girls or to people coming through, look, this is likely to happen. There's going to be this point where you go, this life that I've got right now isn't working for me. It's going to be really hard. Mm. Or it might be, might not. And then the hormones are just going to make it that much worse. Yeah. Very likely. The lack of sleep is going to exacerbate everything. Just be prepared for it. And if everybody around us is prepared for it, then that can help us maybe get through it. Well, I mean, I look at my mom. My mom didn't have a Christian Northrup book. My mom didn't have anybody to talk to. And my dad did not want her. My dad was a a very respected professional person. And he didn't want her talking to anybody about anything. She wanted to see a psych psychiatrist or psychologist and he didn't want that and she and I'm sure that that I mean that's my rendition of the story who knows what's true but I know she suffered she didn't have anybody to talk to and I felt like oh I've got this book I've got these resources I've got the internet I've got people I can talk to so I was in a way different place than than even what my mom had Uh, and I've been able to share with my sisters so they have an idea. Even now, my one sister, she's seven years younger than I am. So she's just getting into it. And she'll complain about something. I'm like, oh, that's menopause. Really? I'm like, yeah, really? So yeah, no, I agree with you. Again, the more like just even doing something like this, putting a podcast out there, making it okay to talk about. I mean, I get I get that I am in a really, really blessed situation. I get that I talk about pretty much anything and everything with my husband, in my family, no qualms about anything. I'm not shy. I don't care what people think if I'm talking about menopause. Just, I don't care. I still had a rough time with it, but I came through it okay. And I get that that's blessed. I get that people don't have that. And so you putting together stuff like this and being able to remind people that A, it's okay to talk about, B, it's a fact of life. So let's talk about it. I mean, I know people, I've seen people get divorced because they just were not on the same page as their partner anymore and didn't talk about what it was for them. And it's not always easy, but I think that in some cases they may regret that decision now when they're at the end of it. Cause it, but when you get in the middle of it and your head starts having a chat with you and it does not want to let go far out and you could just lock onto that one thing. And if I, that's going to do it, that's going to fix it. And it doesn't, you're still with yourself. And it does, the hormones do change your personality. Mm. For a few years, you are mm. not the person your husband married. No, you just, exactly. And you don't want to put up with his crap. No. Oh, my God, I did not want to put up with any of my husband's BS. And I would tell him that. And it didn't always land very well. But we got there in the end. Which, like you say, it's very fortunate. Because yeah. for a lot of people, it doesn't end mm. happily. But then I do think that if there was more, if there was more openness, understanding conversation, how much different would it be if there yeah. was an expectation that for a few years, you know, yeah, yeah. partner's going to be Jekyll and Hyde and you're not going to be able to pick which one it's going to be today. Yeah. But yeah, no, we would, we would just be able to check in with one another or I could just say, I am having a bad menopause day or just a bad day. I know at one point John told me that he actually wrote a pros and cons list out. (laughs) And I was terrible. Even I knew that I wasn't the person that I wanted to be, but I was I couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, yeah. I I would say I am not fit. I am not fit for human consumption today. That's what I would say. Do not not come near me. I am not fit for human consumption. Because I didn't even like myself. You're absolutely right. 
I, and then I'd lie in bed at night and go, oh, my God. Mm. What was I thinking? So then, which makes everything worse because then there's the guilt and the shame and the, you know, all the other stuff that goes with it that just exacerbates all the hormones and exacerbates the brain cells. Yeah. It's and and I think the only thing we can do is talk. Yes. We've got to connect with people and communicate with people when it's happening. Yeah. And have the old crones, the wise women going, it's just this is how it goes. I'm really yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Even the old, wise old men talking to the younger men going, mm, yeah, for a few years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just be patient. This too shall pass. But you don't want to end up alone, you know, if you get a divorce. I mean, I've got a guy, a guy, a male friend, and he's like, at least when I came home and, and she was cranky, but I knew what I was coming home to. And now I come home and the house is empty. And he's finding mm-hmm. that devastating. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a funny old life we live. It is. But I think we're just going to talk. we yeah. just got to talk more about it. it. We don't need to dwell on it. We don't need to wallow in it. We don't need to do anything. We just need to communicate and yeah. be in communication with people and have people around us understand that this is just what's going on right now. Yeah. It's just just what doesn't face. mean anything. It's not about you. It's there's nothing wrong. This is just what's going on in my head right now. Exactly. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Because I think we've been pretty quite direct in that conversation. Yeah, no, 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 no. Don't need to say anything else about it. I think we got it. Get informed, share, talk to people. Don't be shy. Look me up yeah. on Facebook if you want to talk. But Facebook, I mean, seriously, there's a couple of good Facebook menopause groups that you can get involved in. Do research on the internet. Again, my mom didn't have Google. My mom didn't have Facebook groups. She had nothing to look at and to find what her symptoms were. And when you Google, oh, my, I don't remember half of my symptoms now. I, I do remember when I joined the Facebook group and I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, I did have that. Oh, I'm past that one. Oh, oh, yeah. But I've had a lot of them at different points. And there are so many different ones. But again, being able to see what other people are going through and just having conversation. I absolutely agree with you, Karen. Facebook group, the other advantage of that kind of thing is if you're embarrassed about talking about it in person, at yes. least you've got that arm's length distance in a Facebook group. You're never going to run into those women, exactly. more highly unlikely. Yeah. But you can have an open conversation. And even if you don't join in, if you're one of the Facebook stalkers who just, sits just in read about it. at least you can just experience or not experience, yeah, go through someone else's experiences Mm. and share their experiences which helps as much as talking about it sometimes yeah 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 yeah. absolutely thank you so much that was welcome so much thank you for listening to this episode of the menopause marriage and motherhood podcast come and join us in our new facebook group the menopause marriage and motherhood group where we'll discuss what happened in this podcast and all the other things that have got to do with midlife I'll see you there.